Okay, hello once again guys. So this is the last part of the three-part series and discussions natin on uh, DNA viruses. So the learning objectives for this particular topic is that at the end of the session, the learners are expected to be able to discuss the characteristics of gamma herpes viruses and polyoma viruses, uh, to discuss the different diseases that those two groups of viruses would cause, as well as their clinical signs and symptoms, and of course, to uh, be able to enumerate at least you know, the types of methods that we can uh, possibly perform in the laboratories to identify gamma herpes viruses and polyoma viruses. So to begin, let's have the gamma herpes viruses. So uh, this would include uh, HHV4 or the Epstein-Barr virus and HHV8 or Kaposi sarcoma associated virus. So let's start with Epstein-Barr virus. So this is, of course, uh, the causative agent of infectious mononucleosis or IM or mono. No? Uh, we know that this is uh, oncogenic, meaning it has a capacity to cause uh, mutations and new uh, neoplasms or cancers. Okay? The major target of the virus is the B lymphocyte, no? particularly because of the type of receptors that are found on the surface membrane, no? yung, uh, receptors that are CD21 or C3D receptors no? with class 2 MHC as uh, co-receptors no? at the uh, CD21 at C3D. Yeah, no? So, namimili, remember, may tropism yung ating Epstein-Barr. Okay? Not because they're OA, but because uh, yung specifics, no? yung pagmatch ng kanilang uh, glycoproteins with uh, the specific receptors that are present on the surfaces of their uh, host cells. Okay? So Epstein-Barr virus can spread actually from person to person through exchange of body fluids, specific, uh, specifically saliva. So kailan ba natin ma, uh, kailan ba merong exchange of saliva? And usually, di ba, through kissing. Kaya nga tawag dun sa uh, infectious mononucleosis is kissing disease. Okay? Pero pwede rin naman natin makuha yung virus by sharing uh, personal items such as toothbrushes, ew, or uh, eating utensils, ayan, yung pa-share-share ng food, no? Or with, uh, especially with those na merong uh, EBV. Pwede rin naman through uh, direct contact, no? Like sexual contact. It could be spread through uh, semen or sa blood. Okay? Pwedeng-pwede. Okay? So, uh, pwede nating ma-spread um, EBV so long as the virus is active. No, which could be weeks or months. Okay? So once inactive yan or nag-undergo na siya ng kanyang latency, hindi na natin ito ma-spread unless of course pag na-reactivate. So paano ba yung na-reactivate? So tignan natin itong picture na to. Okay? So again, the Epstein-Barr virus may enter the body through the mouth no? after nag-kiss. Ayan, so... Uh, papasok sa may oropharynx natin where it could stay in our epithelial cells. No? Tapos, their presence would call the attention of our immune systems. They would send uh, your B cells. Okay? So, yung B cells natin, ano pa, no? naive pa, ibig sabihin hindi pa siya na sensitize. Okay? So, yun yung i-infect ng ating EBV. And then, eventually, they could spread through your mucosal lymphoid tissue where they could be easily disseminated into other parts of the body. They could be transported to other parts via hematogenous spread or through blood. And then, no, yung na-infect nila ng mga B cells natin, pwede sila doon mag-undergo ng latent infection. Okay? So, latent infection in uh, memory B cells. No? Tapos, mapupunta sila sa ating lymphoid tissue. If na-sensitize, no? uh, nagkaroon ng uh, immunosuppression yung pasyente natin, so, dadami sila ulit. And then, after nilang dumami, okay, pwedeng uh, mag-lice at mag-release ng uh, virions. And the virions can stay on the epithelial cells awaiting for shedding 
no pwedeng maipasa ulit pag nag nakipagkiss ulit nakipag uh, uh, nakipagkalik no yung pasyente natin yan okay so while in latency pwedeng uh, nagka, nagkakaroon niya ng transformation no yung ating B cell nagkakaroon ng transformation uh, the presence of the virus will trigger the persistent and abnormal uh, proliferation of the transformed B cells. Okay. So our EBV has a three antigens. No, we have the latent phase antigens. Uh, this would include the Epstein-Barr virus nuclear antigen or the EBNAs. And the latent membrane proteins or the LPMs, the uh, LMPs rather. You know? So, uh, the LMPs are would indicate, you know, pag present sila, ibig sabihin nun, the Epstein-Barr virus genome is present. Okay, and then another type is the early antigens or the EA. Okay, so the synthesis of this particular antigen is independent on the uh, viral DNA replication. Okay, so ang onset nito, uh, uh, this would actually uh, trigger the onset of productive viral replication. So kung madetect na natin yan, ibig sabihin nun, uh, currently nagre-replicate ang uh, Epstein-Barr. Late antigens, this refers to VCA or the viral capsid antigen. Okay? So these are produced abundantly in cells that are undergoing productive viral infection okay so usually following primary infection epstein bar virus persists lifelong sa host okay uh, they would undergo latency sa memory b cells natin okay now the main viral genes involved uh, transformation and persistence of infected b cells are the latent membrane protein 1 and Late mem uh, latent membrane protein 2A. Okay? So they would undergo self-aggregation on the surface of the infected uh, B cells. And then they'd actually provide uh, signals. No, They would serve a signaling device which would lead to uh, proliferation of your transformed memory B cells. Ayan. No? So uh, sila pala ang may pakana kung bakit. Okay. Uh, nagpo-proliferate yung ating abnormal or na-transform na na memory B cells. Okay? So, uh, actually, ito sila both. No? The LMP and uh, EBNAs, okay? they would be, they would serve as markers. Okay? They would serve as markers of uh, the infected B cells. Okay? para makita sila ng cytotoxic T cells. Okay? So this is true for people that are immune competent. Okay? So yung mga immune competent na yan, uh, the presence of the EBNAs and the L LMPs, okay? LPM ang nakalagay pala dyan. Oh, so the presence of these uh, late phase antigens uh, would trigger you know, our immune systems to send cytotoxic T cells para patayin yung mga infected cells. However, that's not the case for immune suppressed individuals, okay? as well as those that have undergone uh, therapeutic immune suppression kasi nagpa-transplant. Okay? So sila, uh, hindi ma-mobilize ang kanilang cytotoxic T cells. Okay? The LMP and the EBNAs on the surface cannot send signals. So, dili po maad to ang uh, cytotoxic T cells. Okay? So, dahil walang cytotoxic T cells, edi padayon ang proliferation and immortalization of your infected B cells. Ayan. So, problemang malaki talaga pag may problema sa immune system, pag immune compromised or immune suppressed. Okay? So, Clinical manifestation, the most common manifesta clinical manifestation of Epstein-Barr virus is infectious mononucleosis, which is characterized by uh, headache, fever, fatigue, no? may sore throat, ayan, kitang-kita, di ba? May lymph adenopathy, so swollen ang uh, lymph nodes na marapit dun sa uh, lalamunan. Okay? So uh, may pharyngitis minsan na masakit na masakit. 
Okay? And then exudative, gaya nyan, kitang-kita mo na yung plaques, di ba? So, it may resemble also streptococcal pharyngitis. So, yun yung pinaka-common na uh, manifestation of Epstein-Barr virus. However, Epstein-Barr virus is also associated with several types of cancers, and the most important of which is Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay, so Burkitt's lymphoma presents as a tumor of the jaw. Pinaka common niya na manifestation or presentation yung sa jaw. Okay, now the exact cause of Burkitt's lymphoma is actually unknown. Maraming risk factors. No? One is geographic location, pero uh, research suggests that Burkitt's lymphoma is uh, a common no a childhood cancer in regions where uh, may high incidence of malaria gaya sa Africa. Sa iba, no, elsewhere, uh, the greatest risk factor is, of course, HIV. Now, there are three types of uh, Burkitt's lymphoma. We have sporadic, endemic, immunodeficiency-related lymphoma. Pero yung endemic type of Burkitt's lymphoma, yun yung common in Africa, no, uh, near the equator where it's associated with chronic malaria and Epstein-Barr virus. Okay? So, ang facial bones and jaw are the most commonly affected parts. But minsan, meron din mang, ano, uh, involvement of uh, small intestines, kidneys, ovaries, and breasts. No, So, may ibang parts. Pero pinaka-common talaga yun sa uh, jaw. Okay? Kagaya nung nakikita nyo dito sa picture natin. Now, recently, it has been discovered that Plasmodium falciparum is already a cofactor no, ng uh, Burkitt's lymphoma. Magkasama na sila ngayon ni Epstein-Barr virus. This is because of the presence of the cysteine-rich interdomain 1-alpha or the CIDR1-alpha ng Plasmodium falciparum. Okay? So the CIDR1-alpha is actually a, an erythrocyte membrane protein. Uh, usually, this particular membrane protein would interact with enriched human B cells. No, yung B cells natin. So, pag nakadikit yan sa B cells natin, it would cause persistent and aberrant or abnormal activation of B cells during chronic malaria. Yan. So, habang nagkakamalaria yung pasyente, etong ano yung receptor site no o yung uh, CIDR1 alpha ni plasmodium falciparum kinokos niya na dumami yung abnormality ng uh, yung dumami yung abnormal na B cell okay so that would cause uh, impairment sa B cell function sa hindi like change na sila okay so na abnormal na so hindi sila maka-function uh, properly so pag sinakyan pa yan ni Epstein Barr virus ay wala na so, yan ang magiging resulta ng pasyente. Nagka-malaria na, no? nagka-Epstein-Barr pa, nagka-Burkitt's lymphoma pa. Eh, di ba? So, again, Burkitt's lymphoma is caused by no? a uh, coexisting um, infection no? by the parasite Plasmodium falciparum dahil sa kanyang C1, D, uh, CIDR1 alpha at si Epstein Barr. Okay? Oh, they uh, silang dalawang nagtulungan para magka Burkitt's lymphoma yung pasyente. Okay? Now, apart from Burkitt's lymphoma, other cancers associated with Epstein Barr are uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, no? Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, so, pag uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, it's a type of cancer that develops uh, lymph system natin. No? So, characteristic nun is the presence of the Rydsternberg cell. So, familiar ba? Na-discuss nyo na ba yan sa hematology? Yeah, no? So, si Rydsternberg cell, uh, it's a hallmark of Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then, uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, it's a type of disease where malignant cells form in the lymph system. Okay? Pwede siyang kalma lang no? or it could be aggressive. Okay? Uh, usually, the risk factors involve uh, age. No? The older uh, the patient is, the higher the uh, risk of acquiring uh, non-Hodgkin's. No? Also, pag lalaki pa talaga. 
And then, weakened ang immune system or immune compromise. So, older age, uh, male, and then has a weakened immune system. So, uh, madalas yun yung tatlong risk for uh, a person to acquire non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And then, meron din namang oral hair uh, leukoplakia. No, that's commonly seen in people that are immune compromised, particularly those with HIV. Okay, so na ay white patch siya sa dila sa maani, no? Oh. So, hindi naman talaga siya debilitating. Nakakain pa rin naman. Kaya lang, it would cause uh, mild discomfort. Okay? Imagine, di ba yung pagsulan yung mga taste buds natin. Minsan, di ta ka, di ta mahimot ang usilang tao. Uh, touch sa ato ang katong uh, swollen na uh, taste bud. So, how much more ito? Nasa gilid talaga na uh, tang. Okay? So, there's discomfort and sometimes daw merong uh, changes sa taste ng kinakain ng pasyente. So, those are the uh, types of cancers associated with uh, EBV. Okay? So, laboratory diagnosis mag-unsa ta. Okay? So, you can perform PCR or you can do uh, viral isolation you know, or serology. Ito naman yung pinakamadali, yung serology natin. Okay? So, uh, to interpret no, yung uh, EBV antibody tests or uh, diagnosis ng EBV infection, pag wala, no, gaya nito, negative ang EBV mo, no IgM for VCA, no IgG for VCA and EA, and negative din for EBNA IgG, that means okay, uh, the patient is considered susceptible to EBV infection. Kasi wala silang antibodies, di ba? Eh, napaka-common doon nito, halos lahat meron ng ganyan. No? Kaya lang, uh, asymptomatic tayo. So, meron lang nagtatagong uh, EBV sa system natin. Okay? So, kung wala siya talaga, walang antibodies, naku, susceptible siya to EBV infection. Okay? And then, kung nag-positive naman siya for uh, anti-VCA IgM, tapos wala siyang uh, antibody to EBNA, okay? ibig sabihin nun, uh, new or recent infection. Also, Okay, nagpositive siya sa anti-VCA uh, IgM, tapos nagpositive rin siya sa uh, anti-VCA IgG, no? uh, high or rising level of anti-VCA IgG, pero negative siya for uh, EBNA IgG. Ibig sabihin din nun, uh, primary infection pa rin, no? so acute primary infection. So dalawa, okay? primary infection early, IgM lang. Pero pag uh, acute primary infection, nagpa-positive na si IgM for VCA at si IgG for VCA. Okay? What else? Uh, resolution. Okay? So, resolution of the illness may occur before diagnostic antibody levels appear. Okay? Minsan nga, wala. No? Minsan, kahit na active ang um, EBV infection ng isang pasyente, may mga times na hindi detectable ang EBV specific antibodies nila. Okay? And then kapag present naman ang antibodies nila for both VCA and EBNA, ibig sabihin noon past infection. Okay? Okay. What about heterophil antibodies? Okay? So I think na discuss na ninyo ito in your immunosero. Okay. So, heterophil antibodies are antibodies produced against poorly defined antigens. So, dahil poorly defined ang antigens kung saan nakabase ang pagkagawa sa kanila. And so, itong mga antibodies na to are also generally weak antibodies with multi-specific activities. No? Kahit na sino. Kaya hindi masyado ito uh, parang pang screen lang talaga siya to give you an idea whether or not merong uh, problema yung pasyente no may IM siya pero hindi ito yung pinaka basis for diagnosing IM okay parang pang screen lang to kasi napakadami niyang uh, false positive at false negative naman na mga reactions okay so ano bang importance ng heterophil antibodies in IM or in uh, infectious mononucleosis no uh, in patients with suspected EBV infections like IM uh, heterophil antibodies usually 
remains the serologic test of choice kasi nga yun yung pinakamadali no pero tandaan hindi lang ito yung basis okay parang pang screening okay so yung ating mga IgM anti IgM antibodies itong mga het heterophil antibodies no? they can be easily uh, detected no uh, through rapid methods gaya ng monospot or pwede rin naman yung immunochromatographic assays. Okay? So napaka-simple, napaka-bilis. Okay? Uh, how long ba na nasa system ng pasyente yung heterophil antibodies? Okay? How long are heterophil antibodies positive? So uh, sa IM, heterophil antibody appears sa serum ng mga pasyente by uh, the 6th until the 10th day of illness. Okay, so, highest titers are usually found in the second to third week of infection. Okay? They can remain detectable for as little as one week or as short as one week. And then, pwede rin namang umabot hanggang one year. Okay? But, uh, approximately, nasa four to eight weeks no, na nagpa-positive yung heterophil antibodies for uh, IM or infectious mononucleosis. So, ang examples ng mga test for heterophil antibodies are your uh, monospot or the Paul Bonnell test. Okay? The Paul Bonnell test is a really, really old test. It's almost 50 years old. No? But it is still of fundamental importance sa diagnosis of infectious mononucleosis. Okay? So, even though marami na tayong mga immunologic methods na na-develop uh, up to this time, no? pero pwede pa rin naman nating uh, gamitin yung Paul Bonnell. Okay? Pareho lang sila halos ng monospot. The only difference is that uh, si Paul Bonnell uses sheep's blood, si monospot uses horse blood. Okay? So, madali lang, di ba? Pag merong IM ang pasyente, nandun yung kanyang IgM or heterophil antibodies which would react with the uh, RBCs and would cause agglutination. Okay? So, as the disease progresses, lumalaki yung sensitivity percentage ng uh, heterophil antibody assays. Okay? Pero napakataas din naman ng false positive at false negative reaction. Okay? So, although uh, mataas ang specificity niya for IM, nagpa-positive rin naman siya kung merong cytomegalovirus infection, toxoplasma, acute HIV, at pag may SLE ang pasyente, di ba, may uh, heterophil antibodies type pag may SLE. Okay? So, uh, hindi na siya talaga nire-recommend na gamitin as the basis for detecting. So, pang tulong na lang siya, add-on, no? pang dagdag sa mga clues na kailangan natin to identify Epstein-Barr infection. Okay, next we have the HHV8 or the Kaposi sarcoma associated herpes virus which is quite common in saliva. Nakikita siya sa saliva. So, natatransmit natin siya through sexual contact. Highly uh, transported or uh, transmitted use uh, through vertical transmission, blood donation, or exchange of blood, or any material contaminated with blood, or organ transplantation. Okay? Then, uh, itong klaseng cancer na to, no, it's a sarcoma, so cancer, no? it's a type of cancer that forms in the uh, lining of the blood and lymph vessels natin. Okay? Yung tumors ng Kaposi sarcoma, usually they appear on the arms, the legs, the feet, the face, very common. Minsan nasa bunganga. Ayan. Ayan, nasa skin. Ayan, nasa mouth, nasa gilagid. Ayan, para may clouds na pink yung iyong ano, ngalangala. Okay? Pwede rin naman sa genitals, gaya niyan. No? Ayan, sa puwet. Okay? And it can also grow in internal organs. Okay? Highly associated with HIV. Okay? Then moving on to poliomaviruses. So sa poliomaviruses, daghan good ni sila guys. However, we'll just focus on what's commonly isolated in human samples and that's the BK and JC viruses. So they are naked, double-stranded DNA. Again, icosahedral lang capsid nila. No? Uh, they are easily transmitted through direct contact. And of course, ang immunocompetent host can 
uh, retain no, the viruses sa kanilang system, kahit na immune competent. Okay? So let's start with the BK virus. BK is actually an abbreviation of the name ng first patient no, kung saan nakuha natin yung sample na merong BK virus. 1971, si Gardner ang nakakita. Uh, I think if my memory serves me right, ang pasyente was a Sudanese okay, na nag-undergo ng renal uh, allograft. No? So nagpaano siya, nagpa-kidney transplant. Okay? So, many people are affected, no? are infected rather by this virus, pero asymptomatic lang. Okay? So, kung may symptoms man, they usually appear uh, mild, no? mild respiratory infection, mild fever. Ayan. So, yun yung uh, common uh, primary BK infection. So, uh, the virus would disseminate sa kidneys and sa urinary tract where they can persist for life. Okay? Dito sila mag-undergo latency sa atong kidneys and sa urinary tract natin. Okay? So it is assumed that about 80% of the population already has the latent form of the virus. Kaya lang, wala tayong nafe-feel. No? It's a symptomatic unless, unless the person undergoes some form of immunosuppression. Gaya ng halimbawa, nagpa-transplant ka. Pag nagpa-transplant tayo, kailangan tayong saksakan ng immunosuppressives para hindi kalabanin ng ating katawan yung bagong pasok na organ. Ayan. Ayan. So, these are the clinical manifestations of the BK virus. It could cause uh, hemorrhagic cystitis, no? Uh, characterized by bloody urine. Tapos pag nag uh, parang yung uh, uh, a form of endoscopy. Ayan. Kung sinilip pa yung linings ng urinary bladder mo, makikita ang duguan din talaga. No, mommy, I will show you an image na ng bloody uh, urinary bladder. Okay? So, usually, nakikita ito in patients that has undergone bone marrow transplant. Meron din namang uteral stenosis where uh, the linings of the ureters uh, become inflamed, mag-swell, and so, ma-block na yung daanan ng uh, ihi, no? Oh, yun ang ibig sabihin na na-block yung daanan ng ihi. Okay? Or worse, some patients may develop nephropathy. Okay? Pag nef uh, nephropathy yan, uh, usually, uh, uh, it's associated with people who has undergone kidney transplantation. Okay? So, ang main cause of, the main cause of uh, BK virus reactivation usually is uh, therapeutic immunosuppression following transplant. No? So, if for example, you already have the BK virus in your body, tapos nagpa, ano ka, nagpa renal transplant, so magtatake ka ng immunosuppressant, okay? that will weaken your immune system. Para nga hindi masyado siya mag, uh, maging hyperactive kasi may bagong pasok na uh, organ. However, Taking immunosuppressants with the BK virus inside your body will cause the virus to reactivate. Okay? So the virus will attack your kidneys, it would cause uh, nephritis or inflammation, and then in your ureters and other parts of your kidneys as well. Okay? So remember, yung ureters natin, napaka nipis yan na tube. Ha? So kailangan yun para maipasa yung nagawang wiwi from the kidneys to the bladder where it would await um release no pag umihi ka okay now pag nagswell nga yung tubes na yun okay dahil kay BK virus ayun na mahihirapang umihi ang pasyente now again uh your BK virus may lead to nephropathy no or nephritis muna tapos nagdiretso to nephropathy so magstop ang function ng kidney mo and eventually, that would cause your kidneys to fail. About 2% of kidney recipients develop uh, BK nephropathy. Okay? So, hindi naman lahat. Okay? So, mag-unsa sa laboratory. Okay? So, you can perform PCR. You can do urine cytology, which is quite helpful. Okay? Or tissue biopsy. So, in urine cytology, ang pinaka magandang gawin doon is to uh check no uh for vi uh, viremia 
Okay? Or, uh, ang pinakamagandang ano, is to check for CPE through decoy cells. Ayan. Ang decoy cells are actually renal tubular epithelial cells. Nakita niyo na ba yan from your AUBF? <laughs> so, renal, wag, wag masad kung hindi niyo makita yung renal tubular epithelial cells dahil dapat naman ay hindi natin sila makita ng marami. Okay? So, decoy cells are again uh, renal tubular epithelial cells or other uroepithelial cells that may demonstrate uh, CPE no? caused by your uh, BK virus. Okay. So the classical description of the morphology ng mga decoy cells natin that are that would demonstrate no the CPE for the infection would be nuclear enlargement, okay? Tapos may ground glass appearance yan. There's displacement of the nucleus towards the periphery. No mukhang gustong lumabas ng nucleus, okay? So ayan, di ba? Oh, uh, ang tawag daw dito is comet-like morphology. Mara siya comet. Okay? Oh, mara gusto na magawa sa nucleus. Also, okay, uh, there's chromatin margination. So makikita mo yung kanyang uh, nucleus. Yung chromatin niya, nakapalibot na dito. Kaya ang kapal-kapal ng margin dyan. Okay? So chromatin margination, chromatin clumping around the, uh, along the nuclear membrane. Okay? And then of course mukha tuloy siyang bird's eye no yung itsura ng ano ng cell. So these are again cellular changes that are suggestive of uh, BK virus infection. Okay? Now uh, madalas ang ginagamit na ano no na treatment is uh, to check no uh, treatment regimen is to continuously check for viruria or the presence of virus sa urine, uh, to check viremia, and to reduce the amount of immunosuppressive medication. So, wag masyadong parang three times a day. Siguro i-minimize two once a day. Kailangan pa rin may immunosuppressive drugs kasi nga magiging hypersensitive yung immune system natin sa bagong dating na organ. So, hitting two birds with one stone, kailangan lang i-reduce yung immunosuppressive drug para hindi masyado uh, luya ang ating immune system. Ang pinaka-common na ginagamit nila na uh, immunosuppressant in cases of allografts no, or transplantation is the leflunomide. Yeah. So napaka-potent daw yan na immunosuppressant. Yan. No, so cells ng ating ano, ng ating urinary bladder look. Okay. Kinsa di magduguan na daot na jud ang cells. Okay. Dito may margin pa no, tagang Ah, uh, nakikita mo pa yung cells na yan. O, oh, cuboidal pa. Pagdating dito, wala na yung margin. Okay? Ayan, no? Nagbe-bleed yung iyong. Ito yung walls ng, uh, tawag niya, ng urinary bladder. Ayan, dugo-duguan. Alangan. So, ang ihiana, mag-bloody food. Okay? Now, moving on to the last virus for this topic, we have JC virus. So, ang JC virus natin is said to be, uh, said to have infected 75 to 80% of the human population. And usually, uh, nag-umpisa yan nung bata pa daw tayo. Okay? Pero, asymptomatic. Okay? Uh, mode of transmission is usually respiratory root okay? or contact with contaminated urine. Okay? So, after a symptomatic primary infection during childhood, the virus spreads by hematogenous route from the primary site of infection to secondary sites like the kidneys, the lymphoid tissues, peripheral blood leukocytes, and the brain no, to establish latent infection. Okay? So, mame, they discuss natin tong picture na yan kasi nandito pa yan sa kabilang slide. Ayan. Okay. So during immunosuppression, okay, like yung ating BK, pwede siyang maglatent. Ah, uh, pwedeng magkaroon ng latency, no? Pwedeng magtago si JC virus, okay? Now, pag na-immune suppress yung pasyente, pwedeng ma-reactivate ang virus. At pag na-reactivate siya, this can now enter the brain and infect oligodendrocytes of our CNS. Ano ba yung oligodendrocytes natin? Naalala niyo pa ba? Yung ating mga oligodendrocytes, ayan yun. Okay? 
yun yung balot or yung myelinating cells ng ating axons. Okay? So, they myelinate or they cover. Kasi yung ating mga axons, mga parang ano yan, no? uh, parang live wire. So, kailangan takpan natin para hindi naman lahat makurentihan. Baka mamaya magkirig-kirig na takay, nakahubad yung ating uh, axons. So, dapat yung axons natin nakokontrol. At yung nakokontrol ay yung ating myelin sheath. No? So, yung myelin sheath are provided by your oligodendrocytes. Okay? So, unsa na lang ang mahitabo kung ma-infect ang itong mga oligodendrocytes. Okay? Such is also the problem in multiple sclerosis. Okay? So, people taking multiple, uh, having or suffering from multiple sclerosis may take drugs no? like natalizumab. Okay? So, ang natalizumab is said to be a drug that would induce progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy secondary to JC virus infection or reactivation. Papani yun. Okay? So yung pag sinab, ayan no? So nakapasok si virus sa katawan, no? Ayan, nung pagkabata pa. So nag, ano siya, no? Nagtago-tago sa ating kidneys. Ayan. Tapos, siguro na immune suppressive pasyente, nakatakas yung ibang virus at nagsuri-suri sa itong bloodstream. At dahil sa bloodstream yan, mas madali na lang yan mas ma-deliver sa iba't ibang uh, organs like yung mga lymph nodes at yung bone marrow. Now, if the patient is indeed suffering from uh, multiple sclerosis at nagtatake siya ng natalizumab, Okay. Ang tendency ng drug na natalizumab is to push out, no? it would push out yung mga stem cells out into the circulating blood. Now, most of the stem cells may have the uh, CD34 na uh, mga uh, receptor sites. Okay. So, this progenitor cells or stem cells would go out into the circulation and there they could actually transform. Diba ganun naman? Pag, pag stem cells, they're multipotent. They can become or they can produce whatever type of cells are needed. So once in the circulating blood, they may produce you know, uh, blood cells, B cells, with CD19 or CD20 receptor sites. These are the favorite snacks of your JC virus. So, i-invade yan ang ating JC virus. Okay? So, that would uh, travel in the circulating blood and eventually, okay, it would reach the uh, brain where it could infect our oligodendrocytes. Okay? And when oligodendrocytes are affected, doon na naipapanganak ang progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Okay? So, this particular condition is similar to uh, multiple sclerosis. However, I believe, I think this is more fatal. No? Demyelinating ang multiple sclerosis. Demyelinating din naman talaga itong uh, PML. No? It's a fatal demyelinating disease that can present as an adverse effect of uh drugs no those that are taken eh, as a treatment for multiple sclerosis usually the prognosis is poor regardless sa uh, immune status ng pasyente natin okay yeah. Ayan. So, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy is a disease of the white brain, you know, the white matter ng brain natin. Kasi nandun nakalocate yung ating mga oligodendrocytes. So, yung mga myelinated axons natin nandiyan sa white matter. Okay? So, it's characteristic of uh, the patient is characterized by uh, being clumsy, there's loss of coordination, Loss of vision, personality changes, no? magpabuang-buang da yun. Ay. <laughs> May speech problems, no? motor and sensory loss. So those are characteristics of PML. Okay. Ayan, di ba? Nalata ang iya, White matter. So, laboratory diagnosis is uh, to make use of PCR, isolation of the virus. Pwede, pwede siyang i-isolate no, from urine or CSF. Or you can do brain biopsy. 
Okay. However, note that there's no treatment currently for our PML. Okay. So to summarize, okay. So recall your DNA viruses. Yung Paul Papa Agbo. Hehe. <laughs> okay. So one of those he is your herpes viruses, which is divided into eight groups. So you have your uh HHV one, two, and three, which are members of alpha alpha herpes. Uh, virus family, uh, your four and eight are gamma herpes viruses, and your herpes virus five, six, and seven are beta herpes viruses. Okay, and that ends our discussion for DNA viruses. Thank you for listening.